this video is about how to transform a factored equation in a factored form of a quadratic equation into the vertex form of a quadratic equation. However, that's like asking to transform um, inches into kilometers, right? So from inches, you would first go maybe to centimeters and centimeters to kilometers, or maybe you would even go inches to centimeters to meters to kilometers. Either way, you get the idea. This is not a straight shot. It's actually a two-step process, okay? So um, the other ones are much more fluid, transforming between them. So for example, factored to standard and standard to factored, those are um, one shot routes that get you there. There's only one step. Um, going vertex to standard or standard to vertex is also kind of a direct route. Uh, but going factor to vertex, you need a stopping point at the standard form. And so that was that's what steps one, step one is all about, is first take the factored form, the two factors, and perform your distribution so that you can create the standard form, okay? So that would mean we would distribute x times x, x times 15, negative 1 times x, negative 1 times 15, and we would get x squared, oh, I'm going to move that over. <clears throat> um, we would get x squared, a total of, or sorry, minus x. We would also get a 15x and we would get a negative 15. And so we would get x squared plus 14x minus 15. So right away, just by distributing, we create the standard form. And now there's a whole other video that shows you how to go from standard form into vertex form. But I'll just continue the process here as it is so that you can see it start to finish here. But that's what's highlighted here is that if this we need completing the square and there's already a video for how to do this now that we are in standard form, you just need to know standard form to vertex. But let's get it going. So uh, so this was step one. Step two is going to take now that quadratic and we're going to move the constant over to the other side. So we're going to create this what is looks like an expression right now and we're going to make it an equation. And so I'm going to prepare a space for an unknown number that we have to go out and find. So all I did here, so if all that equaled zero in step one, I'm just adding 15 to both sides just to relocate it. It's actually going to come back at the end of our process. It's really just to get it out of the way, right? Because we're trying to create a perfect square here. And so this is where we ask ourselves, what number um, will we get if we take 14? and divide it by two, I'll put it up here, and we square it. That tells us our mystery number. So it's always the middle B term coefficient that we need to put in here. So 14 divided by two is seven, seven squared is 49. And so that's the value that we have to add to the left and the right. Okay, so the reason we did this is because x squared plus 14x plus 49 is a perfect square trinomial, meaning when we factor it, and notice we went from factored to standard, and now we're factoring again, that's normal in this process, so don't get um, worried something wrong is happening, okay, and all that equals... 64, we might as well consolidate that while we're there. So when we go to factor this now, the factors of the lead term come here, x and x, factors of 49 that add to 14 are seven and seven, and, that, and everything's positive up there, so everything is positive down here. So remember the goal is, in completing the square, to create two quantities that are absolutely identical to each other so that we can do this. Right, so that we can say, well, we to shorthand it, it's this quantity squared. And now we're going to bring the 64 over to the other side. We're just bringing it back. Um, and so to do that, we subtract 64 from both sides, right? It's our undoing process to relocate it. You can't just pick it up and slide it over, and we have to have a consequence to the sign. And so this right here is our factored form of or sorry, this right here is our vertex form starting from the factored, 
Okay. So it does go factored to standard to vertex. It's quite a long route. All right. So I'm just going to slide the screen over because now we're going to go in the other direction. This one's a little less cumbersome. So this is where I'll go into a new color. This is where we have our vertex form to start and we are going to place this now into factored form. So the first step <clears throat> though is to get it into standard form and so we're going to expand but we have to remember that we can't just do we cannot just distribute the squaring to the n and to the negative one that would be um, introducing an error because we would only get two terms when we need to get three so what we actually need to do is recognize in step one that we first have to expand that binomial quantity um, out of its squaring form and into what it really means. It's n minus 1 times n minus 1, and we're subtracting 4 from that. Now we perform our distribution. So here we expanded. Now we're going to distribute. Okay, so it'll be n squared. I'm going to go into typing. That will be faster. So we have n squared. Actually, that's not what I'm going to do either. All right n squared um, times, so minus 1n minus 1n gives me a negative 2n. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then bring in the negative 4 because we need to combine here. So I already did the combining step of the n terms. I get negative 1 plus negative 1. And so that's how I got the negative 2n. And now I go and consolidate here and I get n squared minus 2n minus three, okay? Step two, because remember, we didn't want to just get standard form. We want to go now into vertex form. So from that process of n squared minus 2n, I'm sorry, we're going into, yeah, standard form, minus three. Oh, no. I got to back that up that what I just said we are going from vertex to factored so that's what we did we went vertex this looks like it's factored right but we have this term here so we had to actually distribute combine like terms to create standard form and now it again feels like you're going backwards but it's because we had to consolidate the constant so now we're going to factor we had nothing wrong in our process. I just think as I write on this board and speak at the same time, my brain is managing two things at once. And so sometimes I catch myself saying something maybe I could have said in a cleaner way. So thanks for uh, forgiving me. So n squared minus 2n minus 3 we're putting into factored form. n and n. 3 and 1 are the only factors of 3, but what's nice about it is not only do they multiply to 3, but they'll add to a 2 if I handle the signs correctly. So I need it, the these two numbers to add together to make a negative 2. So that means I need a negative 3 and a positive 1. And there is our factored version of the same quadratic that's represented by this vertex equation up above. So the length, you wouldn't really ever go factor to vertex just to accomplish that because it's so cumbersome. But if you're trying to, if you're working with one form of an equation and you're trying to manipulate it into the other two forms, that way you can identify all your important plotting points. So your X intercepts, your Y intercept, your vertex and axis of symmetry, all three equations really work together in a nice way to give you all that information. So being able to flexibly move from one form to another is a really good skill to try to get under your belt. And that's it for this one.